how do you get teachers to understand that what they're measuring kind of displays what they're valuing in the classroom? I mean, I think good examples play a big role. I think having rubrics for the projects that not just talk about, oh, you have to use a conditional and you have to use a loop, but, uh, you know, assigning or apportioning value to use of media effects, self-created media, how have you been creative? What have you done to sort of give students, you know, even in closed-ended projects, this can happen. And, and that is something that I, you know, have tried all along, even when you are targeting certain goals in the project that you have given them, it's a closed-ended project, make this, you know, make this right, do this. But if you give, you always make room for the students to bring something of their own into it. Yeah. Be it, you know, uh, the kind of uh, sprite they use, be it the context that they, you can, you can say, make something, but, you know, connect it to something that is in your community or whatever. You can find ways you have to push yourself. And I think it comes back to your learning goals and what the teachers are, you know, sort of outlining as learning goals. Our learning goals, and I think the CS framework and other things have done a good job of trying to say that CS is not just about learning the concepts. It is about building mindsets. It's about, I mean, the whole CS for all idea also is about, you know, broadening a participation in computing, which means we have to attend to interests and race and community and gender and what interests different kids and, you know, student choice in the projects, of course, is always a great way to sort of make sure you bring the student's voice in and make the idea relevant, make the learning relevant to them. But you can't do open choice projects all the time. And so when it comes to closed ended projects, you make sure that you bring in those elements in your rubric. And there has to be something on collaboration, for example, what did how did you help your partner? How did your partner help you? A simple question like that, is sending a signal to them, I'm supposed to be working with my partner and I'm supposed to be doing well. So I think keeping all those goals of CS sort of on your mind at all times, but also realizing, and this again goes back to why, you know, teaching is, it's difficult. You can't capture everything in every assessment. And that's one of the things that I speak about in the systems of assessment idea. Some assessments help you with understanding the conceptual stuff. When they're doing a quiz on the conceptual, they know that they, you know, there's no creativity there per se. There's no, if they're doing it alone, it's there's no collaboration per se. But there you're foregrounding the idea that concepts are important. But then there is other kinds of assessment that are valuing those other things. And so, you know, taken as a whole, the students leave with an experience that all these things are important. I think it's important to understand you can't get at everything in every kind of assessment and different forms of assessment are good for different things. It's an evolution. I mean, teachers uh, who have come into CS in recent years obviously had more pressing issues of how do I deliver this curriculum in the classroom? But now it feels like it is time to make assessment conversations more central and more a part of the learning process, you know, to make assessment, how to make assessment a part of the learning process, not to grade, not to, you know, sort of use it for, you know, high stakes and accountability, but really as a means to convey to students what the curriculum is about, what you're valuing, but also getting ongoing feedback on how you're doing on all the learning goals. And it's a multifaceted learning goal for CS, for sure. So what about the CS educators who are really into like puzzle based forms of learning? So the assessment is basically the puzzle itself is a quiz. There's one right or wrong way to answer it. And there's like no opportunities for creativity within that. How would you get them or how would you speak to them about expanding beyond that to include multiple forms of not only expression, but assessment? So again, I think presenting this whole palette of assessments, sharing what various assessments can look like, and to sort of bring home the point that the puzzle-based and the quiz-based assessment, it satisfies one goal, it's one kind of assessment, but you're losing out through that assessment. And what you're gaining through that assessment is perhaps this is the feedback you're getting from that, but you're not getting feedback or you're not valuing 
you know, these other things that you value in this curriculum. So you have to sort of mix it up. Today, you give give a, a puzzle-based assessment, make sure that, you know, at the end of two days, kids are doing some form of a project and giving you feedback through another form. And there you, you could be, you know, making sure that they're able to convey, you know, they're able to bring the creativity and collaboration to the table and other things. And so I think giving a sense for the palette and the plethora of forms of assessment and what each one gives to you and to make sure that it's not a monocultural diet. You can't just be eating corn all day. You've got to mix it up because each thing, you know, it's a multifaceted goal and a multifaceted learning process and therefore a multifaceted set of assessments. This excerpt of the CSK8 podcast is from episode number 41, which is titled Discussing Computer Science in K-12 with Shuji Grover. You can listen to this full episode as well as hundreds more by simply searching for the CSKA podcast or by going to jaredoleary.com.